Was it using as a stand? Let's leave that on the floor. It'll be fine. Does this need to be? Yeah. Oh, wait, we're not using that anyways. What am I doing? I don't think so. I'm just leaving it here. And springs of water, and they became blood. 
And I heard the angel of the, of the water saying, uh, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things, for they have shed the blood of the saints uh, and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Verse 8, Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men with, uh, were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give glory to him. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. Then the, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and it, its waters was dried up, and so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They, for they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and out of the whole earth world to gather them to the battle that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there were, uh, it was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell among men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blaspheming God because of the, the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Um, now, did you guys notice, by the way, that every person on the face of the planet at this point is a believer in God? Now, they reject God, but there's no atheists, right? There's no, oh, I, even atheists, obviously, today, they even, they, they use the name of God, right? And, and, and his name in vain, but they're, they, you know, so everybody believes in God. Uh, it's a matter of those who are rejecting God, uh, who specifically God is targeting here. His wrath is being poured out on them uh, because of the things that they've done in, in rejecting him, obviously. Um, but we're going to be looking at a few things here tonight. Two things specifically, if you guys are taking notes. Um, we didn't get a chance to print out as many bulletins tonight, so some of you guys may not have them. Um, but uh, number one, um, we're going to see the introduction to the bowl judgments. That's in verse one, the introduction to the bowl judgments. And number two, we're going to look at the pouring out of, well, the bowl judgments in verses 2 all the way to 21. Let's look at the introduction to the bowl judgments in verse 1. There's really three things that we can see here in verse 1. No, number one, notice they, they come upon the earth. They come upon the earth. Uh, notice in verse 1 it says, Then I heard a loud voice. You guys remember everything that John is hearing in Revelation. There's nothing quiet, right, about heaven. So when we get to heaven, uh, you're never going to hear the word what as much as you hear on earth, right? <laughs> Especially if you're married to me. <laughs> My wife is always hearing, what? What? Um, so it says, then I heard a loud voice from the temple. Uh, so maybe it was Jesus himself that was speaking here. By the way, the word voice uh, is interesting in the Greek. It's the word phone. Voice. Interesting, right? 
It's actually it's singular. So one voice coming from heaven. Uh, and it's saying to the seven angels, go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. And so these seven final bowls of wrath are, are finally being poured out on the face of this planet, right? And so nobody can hide uh, from God's wrath. Uh, the only ones who are preserved and reserved during this time is the 144,000 that we see uh, the Jews who came to the Lord during that time. So, number two, they come quickly. They come quickly. These bowls get poured out, and as we read through, we're going to see that it just seems to be very rapid and very quick. Uh, we don't see anything about any time limit here. It just it just sounds like boom, 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 boom. And, and just reading these verses from verse 2 all the way to 21... Uh, it seems that it's non-stop that they're happening. Now, number three, they complete God's wrath. They complete God's wrath. They finish God's wrath. Uh, in fact, turn back to uh, Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15. Look at verse 1. It says, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them... The wrath of God, notice, is complete. So we're going to see this. This is about wraps it all up, guys. So if you have been tired about hearing about wrath, 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 right? Uh, then good news. This is it, right? We're going we're gonna to be concluding with these seven bowls. So once we get to chapter 18, uh, we're done with, the, with wrath, right? And then it's, it's all the good stuff, really, after that. Um, in fact, in Revelation, if you go back to 16, look at verse 17. Uh, down in verse 17, it says, Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. It's finished. You guys remember Jesus upon the cross? To tell us that, right? It's finished. It's done. And here we see, oh, if this is the Lord himself saying it again, in Revelation. So, knowing this is all going to happen, I, I think it ought to uh, get that urgency within our hearts when we're talking with people to, to talk about Jesus, right? Um, I was at a, uh, a medical place, and oh, I, don't, I don't even know how I started the conversation. Telling people about Jesus. Uh, um, uh, the guys, we're, we're the internet guys setting up the internet here. Talking about Jesus. The other uh, yesterday, I changed my phone, so I'm trying to budget, right? So I'm trying to you know, we'll go with another service, and it's cheaper. And uh, just sitting there, and then uh, I, I, I'm talking about the guy's shoes, and I'm like, "Man, you're like Goliath." <laughs> he's like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "He's all no, maybe like David." And we were, you know, so I'm able to. That was my in, right? Just use anything, and then you can just spark it up, and then get in there and tell them about Jesus. Why? Why can I do it? Because I see that we're out of here, right? And at the last minute, man, let's pull as many people as we can with us, right? Let as as many people as you can tell, just tell them that Jesus loves them. Let the Lord handle the rest, right? He knows what He's doing. Give them the gospel more so. <laughs> That's the good news that He loves them so much so that He would be willing to die on the cross for their what sins. That's the problem. you got to make sure you talk about the problem so that they can understand the solution, right? And, and uh, that he rose again also, right? And, and that's the blessing. So, um, well, let, let's go ahead and look at the pouring out of the bowl judgments in verses 2 to 21. And really there are seven of these. Number one, it involves the foul and loathsome sore. A foul and loathsome sore in verse 2. It says... So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and lo loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. So this reminds me, uh, as I was reading it, of the sixth plague. You guys remember there in Egypt, uh, they have the, the plagues that were happening. The sixth one uh, was in Exodus chapter 9, verses 8 through 11. That You guys remember the sores and boils came all over their entire body and they were, you know, trying to scrape it off and even the uh, um, the animals actually got these sores and, and boils, which is interesting. But here, this first plague uh, that breaks out this loathsome uh, sore 
notice this, this came from, um, well, from God specifically, right? To be poured out on specific people. Notice it's on only those who have the mark of the beast. Now, put it, um, I think, I'll just throw you out a little, I'm very, uh, I, I think you guys notice I'm a little conspiracy sometimes, right? So, <laughs> Uh, I, I've done some research on these these uh, chips that they have, right? You have your credit card on it, your information, and 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 during the testing, the trials and stuff that people that have them, uh, boils pop up, right? It, it gets all infected wherever they have it on their body, and so they're still learning all this stuff. And and uh, I was reading an article, and they said, oh, it's it's it pops up little, you know, little just as nasty. Um, it's because they're hooked up to the five G. And so it creates this radiation that's a little too much, and so they're still working on them. And, and who knows? They, I think they have. There's there's a bunch of them, right? These are all different kind of companies that have them. Uh, what was it, Lucius? Um, oh, never mind. There's a building. Uh, what was the address? Like six 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 is the address uh, there in New York, and there's Lucius Technologies and something. And, they're just crazy. It's like, really? <laughs> You're making a chip that goes in the body, and that's going to be your address. Uh, but anyways, it's there. So I believe that this sore, uh, this boil, if you will, is in one specific area on your body, and specifically wherever that mark is. And that mark can only be on your right hand or on your forehead, uh, which is interesting. So, um, anyways. Uh, a political man, he comes on the scene at this time, right? He's giving all the answers, and he's bringing in this faith peace to all the people. He forms this one world government uh, system. He becomes the ruler over this system. Uh, the temple is built again during that time. Uh, he comes in, you know, three and a half years later into the temple, puts a stop to the sacrifice, because they're sacrificing. He's like, oh, all done. And, in fact, he declares himself as God and declares himself to be worshipped as God, right? That's what we call the abomination of desolation. And at that moment, um, you know, God just begins to pour out his wrath. But at that moment, this Antichrist puts out, that's when he puts out that mark, right? That everybody receives that mark and that system. Um, and so notice something, by the way, again, I kind of gave it out. It, it's this boil is in the singular it's not plural uh and so it's one in one specific area and and so i believe like i said uh it's it's in wherever that mark is so whether it's on your forehead or your right hand and and uh notice by the way a, a loathsome sore boil it, it 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 comes up right like a big thing out of your skin and then it pops on its own and then it oozes all this nasty white, like green stuff and blood, right? Pussing coming out, and it's like, oh, and then you lick it. Right? Oh! <laughs> I didn't really like it. Come on, guys. Um, anyways, we're going to be eating afterwards. <laughs> uh, it's pretty disgusting. If you look it up, right, and you, you're like, what's a boil? And you're looking at these people, and it's, it's nasty. I can't stand watching like those pimple popper people, right? My wife is fascinated. I'm like, oh, great. Oh, I'm just going to shoot the TV or something. Um, it's disgusting. But anyways, I, I'm just saying, if you are not, if you, let's say you're a believer, you don't want to live for the Lord. You don't want to die to yourself daily. Uh, you definitely don't want to live. You, you would rather submit to the world instead of submitting to the Lord. And let's say all of this happens and you're still here. Uh, and you're going to take the mark. I would advise you not to, obviously, but if you do, just remember that boil is going to be boiling right here on your forehead, and it's going to go into your eyes, and you're going to be like, oh! So, you got another option there. Anyways, not telling you to get the mark, but don't do it. Uh, let's, let's go on with our notes here. The second bold judgment involves the sea becoming blood. It becomes blood. Look at verse 3. It says, Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man. And every living creature in the sea died. So this judgment 
Um, reminds me of the, the first plague. You guys remember there in Exodus chapter 7, verses 17 to 21, um, Moses uh, is there on the river, and the blood, uh, or the river, the water becomes blood, right, with Moses. So, um, um, also, if you guys remember in Revelation chapter 8, verse 8 through 9, the second trumpet that happened, uh, something like a great mountain just came and it fell out of the sky and it fell into, it says, the sea. Uh, and because it says the sea, I think it's the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and so a third of the sea uh, became blood and a third of the sea, uh, all of the living creatures died. Uh, in the sea. And so the second bowl affected all the rest of the two thirds of all the sea life uh, there in the water uh, that remained. And so every living, living creature, think about it, literally died because the one third already got you know in, in, impacted and, and they all died. Now it's two thirds. And, and so literally, if you love seafood, you're not going to be having seafood anymore after this one. There's literally no life. In the waters. Um, so let's come to the third bowl judgment. Uh, it affects the rivers and the springs. The rivers and the springs in verses 4 through 7. It says in verse 4, Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the, the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And so the inference is that every living creature in the water died uh, because of the blood. And, and in verse 3, uh, may have dealt with the, the salt water, uh, more of the, the sea, right? And here uh, is referring to more of the springs, the, the fresh water. Uh, everything is impacted at this point. And, and so there are two things I think we can note, by the way, uh, about this third judgment, if you're taking notes, uh, is number one, there's, there, there are consequences to sin. There's consequences to sin. Look, in verses 5 through 6, in verse 5 it says, And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be. Why? Well, because you have judged these things. They have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. Um, I love that, right? Um, so is there an angel over the waters? Yes, Revelation makes that very clear. And he's even giving praise to the Lord because of what he's doing. He's giving back to what they deserve, right? Uh, in fact, turn back to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, look at verse 10. Verse 10. Um, it says, and this is the tribulation saints that cry out to the Lord. It says in, in Revelation 6, 10, and they cried out, they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And so right here, uh, in our passage tonight, is where God is saying, Now, now, right? He's answering their prayer, and he's saying, Right now I am going to avenge your blood. Now these saints, they received... Um, justice, if you will, for what had happened to them, uh, because you remember, we'll get to it later in chapter 19, they got beheaded for their faith, right? Uh, they chose to, to follow the Lord, they're new believers, we would call them, and, and they, they were extreme in their walks with the Lord, they were, they were uh, I love it, and they're, they're, their faith in the Lord. And so, there, there's always consequences to sin, and churches most likely, they, they don't talk about sin uh, as much. Have you guys noticed there's a lot of big churches, and, and these big ones just avoid sin, but how can you talk about the answer, or, you know, the solution, uh, unless you know about the problem, right? And the problem is sin. Yeah, you all need to know, your sin is what separates you from a loving God, right? It's your iniquities. Uh, that is, that, I mean, that's, that's, God can't even hear your prayers. So if you're even thanking Him for your food or just praying anything, if you're in sin, He's not listening. You got to repent, uh, and that's turning away from. It's recognizing that He's God, you're not. He's worthy, you're not, and and thus that's a submission. That's humility, right? And He gives you the grace that you need, and, and really the gift. Uh, I, is repentance. He, he, he actually offers you that. It's something that you can't even do in and of yourself. In and of ourselves, guys, we are, there's nothing good in us, 
right? Uh, and so he is able to do that work in and through you and I, which is amazing. So, um, so sin will, will keep you out of fellowship with the Lord. Uh, and, and by the way, it's our choice to follow the Lord, right? Joshua even gave that option. You guys remember uh, the children of Israel, they're traveling around. Um, uh, but he basically told them, um, uh, be, be sure your sin will find you out, right? Uh, so the same applies to you and I as well. We can't hide anything from the Lord. Uh, in Romans chapter 2, verse 6, it says, God will render to each one according to his deeds. And so look, we, we can hide pretty well from our friends, from our co-workers, even from our family, right? Um, and, and none of them are that smart enough, right? They, can, they don't know what's going on. Uh, but guess what God does, right? He sees what's going on in the secret. He sees your character, right? Who you are when no one's looking. And so, uh, in fact, Hebrews 4.13 says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Uh, Proverbs 15, verse 3 the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Wow. So uh, we can't get away. <laughs> uh, the second thing I learned is there fair, there's fairness with God. There is fairness with God. Uh, it says, and I, and I heard another from the altar saying, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And in verse 7 here. Whatever God does, you guys, keep in mind, it's always going to be fair, and it's always going to be just, right? It's always going to be true. Uh, his ways are always righteous. His ways are always just. Uh, and whatever judgment we get, think about this, you actually deserve it. Do I need to do that? Oh, no. Um, you deserve it, right? Whatever judgment God gives to you. And that's why God's grace is so special, because we don't deserve a thing. Um, and his death on the cross uh, was our access to even have anything, right? To even be free in him, to be a new creation in him, to, to access uh, every good and, and perfect gift that he even offers us. It's through his grace and what he's done upon the cross. In Romans chapter 9, oh, you guys read it already? Oh, man. You guys. God's watching you, right? Not, no wonder you guys are like, yeah, so yeah. Um, Romans chapter 9, verse 20 says, But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay? And from the same lump to, to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? Guys, we, we think somehow that God is, um, you know, somehow he's not fair to us. Since he's fair with other people. I mean, Lord, I did this, but look what they did. And they got away with it. How come you're not judging them, right? And, and, and God gives us less than we deserve, basically, right? We can get that attitude with the Lord. I think we need to be very careful and watchful. Even if you find yourself in the hospital, maybe you find yourself in jail, maybe you find yourself in a situation where you can't get out of bed, right? Um, he's still just. He's still worthy. And, and, and by the way, I think what he's doing in that case is he's shaping you. He's forming you. He's the potter. We're the clay, right? Who are we to say to the potter, well, why did you form me like this? <laughs> why is my foot still in pain? <laughs> he knows. He knows. What he, in fact, he probably heard you pray. Lord, help me to be more like you. Oh, right? Help shape me and form me, Lord. Right? Well, he will. He'll answer that call. And, and he loves to use trials and tribulation in our life. And guess what? You deserve worse than that. Right? So next time you're going through something, realize, man, you, you, you don't even deserve that. <laughs> God is blessing you with that to get closer to him. And, and uh, he's, he's making you more mature in him. Right? So it's a good thing. Anyways, I know. I know. I'm with you guys. I don't like it either. Uh, let's go to the fourth bowl judgment. It involves the sun scorching men. The sun scorching men in verses 8 and 9. Um, this is kind of how our media is putting out here for the, the, the summertime, right? They're like, everyone's dying. We're all going to die. It's melting. Oh, it's uh, going to be 80 degrees. Oh. Uh, it says right here in verse 8, Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was 
was given to him to scorch men with fire. I guess the women are okay. Uh, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Wow. So, they, I, I know, every, men and women, I'm sorry. <laughs> we all, they all got scorched, right? Uh, but, so men got hit with these physical burns, um, and, and bad heat basically hitting them, right? And, and guys, getting burned is no joke. Have any of you guys been burned by, by fire? I've been burned twice. I didn't learn my lesson uh, going up to a barbecue grill, right? And I have the thing closed, and I have every single dial off full blast. And I'm like, what did I do with that lighter? Oh, here it is. Boom! The thing just pops open, and a big, you know thing of fire just rolls right at me and I, all my hair was gone and then my arms were and all the hair was gone here and I was in, I don't know how many days I was like <laughs> it hurts it, it like it's like it fire is still there it's not so I can imagine during this time they are not happy um, so can, can, if you guys can even imagine that right um, um, notice by the way who exactly is getting burned here. It's those who blasphemy the name of God. They are, they are, they, 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 the word blasphemy, by the way, it means um, uh, speaking evil of, right? And so they are literally speaking evil of the name of God. They're using God's name in vain, and they're blaming God on this because, well, it is from God, right? Uh, but the waters are, are blood, no fish in the sea, right? There's a horrible stench, I'm sure, coming out. Uh, and then also there's that sore, right, that boil coming from that mark, either on their right hand or their forehead. And, and so they're in pain. Uh, but God will, uh, one thing I notice with the Lord is he's not always going to strive with man, right? And, and these men specifically, notice what they're doing. They're not repenting. With all of that, they're still not repenting. They're still at war with God. It doesn't matter what you do to them. They're still going to be like, rah, 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 right, against God. And it's like, wow. And they're, they're, that's what I realized with the Lord. There comes a time where God says, enough is enough. You want it? I'm going to go and let you have it, right? Here you go. And, and so he's not a respecter of man. In fact, God will respect the choices uh, of men uh, here on earth. And, and he gives them what they want. So today... Um, I see the same type of people that are dwelling among us, right? There's still people like that around us that are at war with God, and they speak, but they don't care what they say against God. And it's like, hey, man, I want to be a far away from you in case lightning strikes. Like, <laughs> But uh, they, they reject God for so long, and God finally says, okay, go ahead. Uh, and, and in fact, in Genesis 6-3, you guys remember, God said, my spirit shall not... Um, strive with man forever. You guys remember then the flood came and, and, and knocked them all out. So if you can remember even Pharaoh in Exodus, uh, he specifically hardened his own heart against God. Uh, so much so, over and over and over, and finally at the end, you see that God finally said, he acknowledges Pharaoh's heart and says, okay, go ahead. You, you, you want to go ahead and have a hard heart again? All right, I'll go ahead and encourage that. I'll let it. I'll, I'll let go, and you can have a hard heart. And and so he did. And so um, I think we need to pray all the more, guys, for people like that around us. If you have family, friends, coworkers, and they're always like you, Christian, blah 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 blah, right? Um, keep praying for them in a good way. Don't don't pray that God crushes them. Uh, if anything, pray that God gives them a soft heart, right? Uh, that, that they wouldn't get so far where God says, okay, enough's enough. You're, you're, you made your decision. You're done. Uh, I would hate to be uh, hearing, kind of like the, the parable, right, where uh, Lazarus, right, they can see each other from the gulfs, right? I would hate to be in a situation where I'm around people, especially family and friends, and, and I see them in hell, and they see me. And they said, what? You knew about Jesus this whole time? You didn't tell me about Jesus? You should have, you should have tied me up and told me. You should, why did you stop? Well, you know, what am I going to say? Well, because you said a bad name to me. <laughs> right? I want to be persistent. I don't want to give up on people. And that's not going to happen by any means. But um, 
it's sad to think about it, isn't it? That it, to hear the screams of those, it's, it's not fun mm -hmm. where they go. Uh, let, let's keep going here. The fifth bull judgment uh, involves, it, well, really, it brings darkness upon the throne of the beast. Uh, brings darkness upon the throne of the beast. In verse 10 and 11, it says, Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness. Notice it's only his kingdom. And they nod their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their swords from wherever the, I, I believe, wherever the mark is, and did not repent of their deeds. If you guys remember in Exodus chapter 10, uh, verses 21 to 29, that ninth plague there in Egypt only, because remember Goshen had light, but in, in, in Egypt, uh, it was all darkness. And, and in fact, it was a darkness that could be felt. You could feel it. It was so thick. Uh, and, and again, uh, we're seeing this darkness as a judgment of God's wrath on uh, those who are rejecting God, those who are part of this system, uh, the elite, if you will. So this darkness can be felt. And, and here this darkness comes upon the throne, specifically, of this beast, right? And it brought pain. Um, how does darkness bring about pain? This one does. Uh, and they are in pain because of this darkness. And funny, because Satan is called um, the prince of darkness. In fact, in, in Ephesians 6, uh, 12, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And it goes on. Um, what are we supposed to say at the... Who's up? Who's up? Yeah, okay. Sorry. VBS guys, so oh, man. Uh, but, but here is darkness being poured out so that uh, you can feel this, this, right? It, it can't be controlled. Uh, think about it. By any spiritual host, right? That these, these spiritual hosts boast in their darkness that they have power, but even their power is limited at this time. They, they can't do any signs and marvels, right? As remember back to rewinding when they were deceiving all the people and, and they all applaud and say, oh, hey, he's going to be our king now, our God, basically. Uh, but even the Antichrist, he can't do anything at this point, right? He's, he's without power. And in fact, in 2 Thessalonians 2.9, it says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So this is dealing with the people, uh, these people during this time uh, of tribulation. These, this is a type of people uh, during that tribulation time that we see, they're in rejection against God. God is saying, okay, and he gives them over to that strong delusion. Why do they refuse to repent? It's because they rejected the love of the truth. And, and it's because uh, those who rejected the Lord, God gave them over to that strong delusion, right? Because they, they, especially if they took the mark of the beast, there's no more help after that. God is, there's no more grace, if you will. Uh, once you take it, you're done. You made your decision. You signed the lines, right? Uh, and it's final. Uh, and so their fate is sealed with their, that, that mark. Let's, let's go on to the sixth bowl here. There's only seven. Uh, the sixth bowl judgment involves the battle of Armageddon. You guys ready for this? In verses 12 to 16, this event, uh, the battle of Armageddon, is going to happen after the, that seven years of God's wrath being poured out on the there, there's four things about this battle we want to see. Uh, it's only five verses. Uh, number one, it involves the kings of the east. The kings of the east. Look at verse 12. It says, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the, water, the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Now, the Euphrates 
is that long, really, you know, most important river uh, in the Middle East. It's mentioned in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 14, in the Garden of Eden. It's also linked to Babylon. Uh, we're going to talk a little more about Babylon later in chapter 17 and 18. But uh, this river, Euphrates, is drying up even right now. Right? There's certain parts where you can just walk all the way into it, basically. It's all dried up. Uh, it depends on where you're at, but it's it's interesting at this time This is going to happen at this specific time where it's really dried up and And obviously the heat right from the Sun just got it scorched all the people And so you can imagine the water turned to blood blood is not like water And so it's not gonna be able to travel like water and so it literally is dried up and it's making way for these kings coming from the east. And so these kings from the Middle East, by the way, this is not the battle of, I, this is my own personal uh, viewpoint. It's not the battle of God and Magog uh, mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. That one is believed to happen at the, prior to uh, or at the rapture of the church. And you guys remember the hook uh, goes into the northern uh, kingdom and it brings the nations uh, to Israel, and, and which I believe can happen, by the way, at any time. <laughs> uh, the second Magog invasion seems to be after uh, the millennial kingdom. So you got the seven years, the thousand years, and so after that thousand years, I think that's where that second Magog uh, uh, battle begins. According to Revelation chapter 20, uh, verses 7 and 8, and I also don't believe this is a re reference uh, to Revelation chapter 9, uh, verses 13 to 16, dealing with the sixth trumpet. Now, this is just me personally. As it pertains to, you guys remember there, it's talking about that 200 uh, million man army and, uh, coming against Israel. But this this is very clear reference um, dealing with what Zechariah said. That Zechariah chapter 12, uh, verses 1 to 3, and Zechariah uh, 14, verses 1 through 4, Jerusalem has all the armies, basically, it sounds like of the world, but specific armies, uh, coming against it, right? And they're all going to gather uh, specifically against God and his people. Uh, and, and so there's a lot of information there. Like I said, Zechariah has a lot of information uh, uh, you can read about. But um, the second thing we learn about this battle of Armageddon is it involves unclean spirits. Unclean spirits. It says in verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Now, you guys remember we saw uh, the, the dragon uh, in um, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. Uh, and that was, well, it's Satan, right? Satan is the dragon. Uh, it says, Out of the mouth of the beast, this is that one uh, ruling... Um, the one who's ruling basically over the, the, the whole world, right? This government system, this, you could say the political system. Uh, and it says, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, this is the ruler of, uh, you could say, the religious system. So you got one, the Antichrist, over the, the government, right? The political, the one demanding to be worshipped. Uh, and, and, and worship to the image as well. And then you got the false prophet, who is uh, basically the part of that religious system. It says, For they are spirits of demons performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the, uh, of the whole world uh, to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. So remember, when all the nations come against Israel, it's going to be demonically inspired. And I think those, even today, that hate the Jews, they hate Israel uh, because of the Jews, I think they are also demonically inspired, uh, especially those, you know, with the camps and everything and then persecuting them. Uh, very, very evil. Um, we could talk about that for a long time as well, but let's keep going. It involves a blessing from Jesus, number, number two here. A blessing from Jesus in verse 15. It says, Behold, I am coming, Jesus says, at, uh, as a thief, blessed is he who watches. So this is the third blessing out of the, actually in Revelation, you got uh, what you, we call the seven Beatitudes, believe it or not. And, and, and uh, so this is the third blessing out of the seven. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3 is the first. 
Revelation chapter 14, verse 13 is the second. And here we have the third um, uh, blessing, basically, uh, of Jesus, where he says blessed. Uh, but right here involves two things. Number, number one, notice the first thing involves watching. Uh, you'll, you'll be blessed if you are watching, just simply watching, right? Uh, the word watch means to be vigilant. It means to stay alert, stay awake, right? Stay tuned in to the what? To the fact that Jesus could come back at any moment. Uh, and, and in fact, in Luke chapter 21, verse 36, Jesus says, Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So as believers, guys, we are to be watchful. Uh, and, and the event that I'm watchful for, and that I encourage you and all of us to be watchful for, is the rapture, right? Be, be alert. There's signs that are going to happen, the Bible gives us. And, and we're out of here. As you see the signs, look up all the more, right? Be a watchman on the tower. And if you're a watchman, uh, you have a responsibility to warn, right? It's, it's, you're, you're worse than a fool if you see danger coming and you don't warn the people in the city, right? So let people know. Don't back down from those that are like, you, yeah, blah, blah. <laughs> Keep telling them the truth, right? And get ready. Right? Because he's coming back very, very soon, and I, I can't wait. Um, when the rapture happens, by the way, there's going to be that strong delusion, and I think it's already at play here now. Uh, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work among us, right? Uh, and the rapture hasn't even happened yet. But uh, this is what people believe that aliens are going to arrive, right? And, and uh, in fact, I, I found in second. Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 it says the coming of the we read it already the coming of the lawless number one is according to the working of Satan with all power signs and lying wonders but notice this and with all unrighteous deception right among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this reason notice God will send them a strong delusion. So there's going to be a delusion. There's going to be a, um, uh, you know, something that people are going to be, uh, you know, influenced by. In fact, in Isaiah 66, verse 3, it says, Just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations, God says, So I will, I choose their delusions. And bring their fears on them, because when I called, no one answered. And when I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. You know, it's interesting. There's so much, guys, I wanted to go through, and I, I cut it all out, because I could talk forever. But I'm going to quote you guys. There's, there's an article by a New Ager, Jim Salis. He describes what uh, Israeli psychic Yuri Geller said. He says, extraterrestrials... Uh, would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, they, the world uses that word a lot, and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. And it goes on, if you talk to me, you know, read it more on it. Uh, it's a reconditioning, right? The aliens took these millions of people, reconditioned them on another planet somewhere, and then it's going to bring them back, right? And they're going to they're gonna be part of our worldly system, is what they talk. This is the world talking, by the way. So the world is preparing themselves for some kind of event that happens, because why? The only the Christians, if we're the only ones saying, hey, millions of people are going to disappear, it's because God took them. Then, then they, the enemy has a problem, right? People are going to go back to the Bible and be like, well, if that had came true, what else is true? And they're going to get saved. So they, there has to be a lie that goes out. So this is part of that lie. In fact, another article quote from Barbara uh, Marks, uh, you know, her, her last name there, in her book, Bringers of the Dawn, she quotes, and I quote, The people who leave the planet during the time of the earth changes do not fit in here any longer and they are stopping the harmony of the earth when the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time uh, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining so 
Oh man, we could keep going here, but I think you guys get where you know the world is trying to train the world. Uh, by this is very worldly stuff. But as believers, we ought to be watching and waiting for Christ's return, right? And it, it can happen at any time. So the second thing, let's go on in our notes here. Uh, involved in this blessing is uh, keeping. Not only is it watching, it's also keeping. You're going to be blessed. In verse 15, it says, and, and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. The word keeps, by the way, means to hold fast, uh, to hold firm. And we're not to turn away from the fact that, well, Jesus is coming quickly, right? Don't be fooled. Uh, don't be... Don't be found slothful uh, and, and not holding to this truth, right? Or, or we can be found exposed and in shame, right? Is really the idea. So uh, the fourth and final thing we learned about this battle is it involves the Valley of Megiddo. The Valley of Megiddo. In verse 16 it says, And they, this is speaking of the, um, uh, the, that one world you know, system, the B system. Uh, it says, And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Now, it, many believe this is the Valley of uh, Megiddo, uh, also called um, the, the, well, the battle, it's where the place where uh, the battle, we call the Battle of Armageddon in our English uh, translation there. Uh, but at the second coming of Jesus, uh, we know that Jesus is going to come first to Basra, in Isaiah chapter 63, verses 1 through 5, he's going to make his way up to uh, Jehoshaphat, that's the, the, or the Kidron Valley, or whatever you want to call it, uh, in Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Then the Valley of Armageddon, where we're at right here in Revelation 16, 16. Uh, realized, by the way, in Revelation 19, uh, 15, right? He's going to be coming back with you and I. Uh, he's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, right? Uh, he's coming back on that white horse. It's going to be an amazing time. Um, let's keep going here, though. The seventh bowl judgment uh, involves the greatest earthquake ever. The greatest earthquake ever. In verses 17 to 21, there's only three things here. Uh, number one, it completes God's wrath. This seventh bowl judgment is it. it. There is no more. It's all done after this. It completes God's wrath. In verse 17, it says, that Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. <laughs> so just like we seen earlier at the bowl judgments and, and also uh, uh, Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. Um, secondly, it culminates with the greatest earthquake ever. It culminates with this greatest earthquake ever. Look at verse 18. It says, and there were noises, thundering noises, by the way. That scares me. I don't know about the view, but it scares me more than the word thunderings. And it says, lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now, the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So we see all the political and religious system falling apart uh, at this point, dealing with the great, great Babylon. Actually, I don't even know why, but she's divided up into three. Uh, maybe because she made herself out as a mockery against God. God is, we call it the three in one, the, the, uh, right? And God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But you see the same kind of system at play there. Uh, with the worldly system. So maybe God is mocking that, just like his judgments with Egypt was mocking the gods that they serve. Uh, and, and then just like these judgments, he's mocking uh, what they believe to be their God. And so now he's dividing it up. And you guys want to be free? And it's divided up in three. I don't know. That's just where my mind went. Anyways, it says, Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. So this is how big this earthquake is. Yikes, right? This is huge. Uh, let's keep going. The last thing here, it causes great hailstones to fall from heaven in verse 21 and 22. It says, And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Then blast, men blasphemed at God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. So just like the seventh plague in Egypt, uh, you guys remember in Exodus chapter 9, verse 18, Hail uh, fell from heaven. 
But it's nothing like what's to come with this last bowl judgment. Uh, this one is, think about 75 pounds of hail coming directly at you, right? Um, I mean, we get the hail, I mean, the biggest ones that I've seen are like a, a, a golf ball. And, and those are breaking people's windows, denting up vehicles, right? Uh, and doing a lot of damage. But imagine 75 pound hail, just big balls coming at it, right? Um, and, and this is gonna be horrible, right? There, I mean, your chances of survival are very not gonna happen, right? It's gonna be really hard. And yet men, still, those who did survive, are still at war with God, speaking evil at the name of God, right? Using his name in vain. And so this is the third time uh, they, they blasphemy God again. Uh, very, very sad, uh, all that's going on here. But I pray that you guys are encouraged. Uh, I know there's a lot of death and despair and wrath, right? Uh, but for the believer, guys, may there be an urgency within us, right? To watch, right? To be waiting, to be expecting, and, and, and have that urgency within you that the Lord really can come back at any time. And how is he going to find you, right? Are, are we going to be those with... Uh, we, we prepared. We had oil in our lamps, right? And we were ready. We, were, we couldn't wait, right? We were excited. Uh, how is it going to be, right? So uh, hopefully, it, uh, I know it's going to be an amazing time. We're going to be with the Lord. We're going to be dancing. It's going to be great. So um, let's pray, guys. Let's give this time to the Lord. Lord, thank you so much uh, once again for, for the time that you've given us. We do pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to uh, be waiting for you, Lord, to be watching uh, and expecting. Uh, we, you're, you're amazing, Lord. And the things that are going to happen here on earth, we definitely don't want to be a part of that. And uh, so we do pray that, that our hearts would be ready, that our hearts would be uh, prepared, uh, that we would know you. I pray if there's anybody here that does not know you, Lord, that they would cry out to you, that they would recognize their sin has separated them. And they would uh, come to the cross, uh, the, the bloodshed that you did for them, that the, your body was broken, Lord, you were bruised and beaten, uh, that we might be free in you, that we might have a relationship with you uh, for all eternity, Lord. Uh, if we were to simply abide in you, you would abide in us. That's your promise. And uh, Lord, I pray that there would be true salvation uh, in this fellowship, Lord, that we would uh, give true praise from our hearts and true uh, just in our service, Lord, in all that we do, uh, may it be a, an act of worship unto you. So help us, Lord, to live a life um, that is a, a living sacrifice unto you, uh, one that is holy and, and, and pure and uh, undefiled, Father. I pray you would uh, keep our eyes on you, and may we run this race, Lord, at the, the finish line well. I pray that we would hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. And, uh, Lord, it would be an amazing time. So, till then, uh, use us, Lord, uh, and help us, Lord. We need your help. And uh, grant us your grace, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. If you guys got any questions, feel free to come up. Um, yeah. There's so much there. There's a lot. So, praise the Lord. Love you guys. Oh, we forgot chapter 17. My bad, never mind, we're going to 17. Push that bottom button on the right. <laughs>